Hello, hello. I'm finally going to create something. Yay! Um, I have made, um, uh, this one is a little window, I don't know if you can see, a little window pocket. Um, and this one is a little pocket envelope that I've made. So I'm going to um, just um, make one of these and take you along with me today. Um, so, the first thing you will need is index cards. These are quite big, these ones, um, but you could use a smaller one. I've got a couple already prepared, so this video is not hours long. Now, if I just grab my die cut thingy, um, I have no idea what... Oh, it's X cut. Um... But I don't know what these were called because I've got them in little sleeves so I've cut the top off it so it fits in my folder and I do this upside down um, I'm sure many of you have got better ways to do this but this is how I'm going to do it so I'm going to put my cutting board on the bottom let me just see if that's in just about my cutting board on the bottom and then I am going to place my index card. Then I'm going to put this on upside down. And this is just so I can keep things in line and where I want them to go. I've just turned my cutting board over because it's got a bit it's got a bit bendy one way, so I've just turned it over. Hopefully I'll flatten it out over the next few goes. So I'm going to line that up where I want it and then I'm going to take the little magnet flat. I'm not sure if this is how you're supposed to use this but I'm, I do this upside down. So I just gently put this down so I can make sure my die cut is still in the right place and then I'll put that all the way down and now I know that shouldn't move. Put my top cutting board on. I'm just going to run this through here, right, my cutting, these things, mats, plates, I'm not sure what they're called, they do need a bit of a clean. Now, um, the other way I do sometimes do this is with a bit of masking tape and I just make it as unsticky as I can by putting it on and off my clothes. So obviously this piece we can still use and I'll show you what I've done with some of those. So we've now got our um, cut out index card. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink this up and how I'm doing this is I'm just putting some um, Vintage, oh and I've got this too, oh I was going to use this, oh. oh I can use this too can't I, this is the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo, so I'm doing that, and I'm taking my water, I'm just giving that a good squirt, and then I'm just going to plonk this down, I'm going to start with the, with the Vintage Photo, I'm just dragging it through. way too much ink on here but I have have a few these are not so good die cuts <laughs> but they'll they'll ink just the same so I'm gonna do those I'm not worried about any white bits because I still have another colour this is one of that I've used um, um, masking tape on but I left it too sticky so it ripped ripped the index cards oh it's one of my hairs that's fine Okay, so that is those. I'm just going to pop those out of the way because those of you in the UK, in true Blue Peter style, what I would then do is dry those with my heat tool and here are two I prepared earlier. <laughs> this is just to try and keep this as a quick video. I'm just going to dry a bit of my mat. Now this is forest moss that I got from the lovely Abby. So 
also I'm gonna on again I've put way too that's a waste of ink isn't it that's right I'll sort that out okay um, I'm gonna put some water on there and I will I do dry it between each color because they do get a bit muddy so I'm just gonna pop a bit of green here and there on here that's a bit square I might put a bit more on that bottom bit actually and get it to touch this is going to be much greener than the other the other ones I've done because obviously I've got a lot of green I quite like that I'm going to put a bit more on here this is not going to take too long to dry so I will be drying this on camera hopefully my heat tool will work um it has a little it I've, I've dropped it a few times and it has a bit of a habit of um overheating <laughs> so sometimes it just stops working and hopefully it will dry very quickly so I have got a funny story to tell you um I won't tell you while the heat tool is working although it's probably the best time for me to tell you so you won't hear but I've had a, I think I mentioned it in my last video on Friday. It was very funny. Well, it wasn't funny on Friday, but Saturday it was very funny. Probably a little bit close, but I want it to dry quickly. Okay. So I'm going to ink this and I'm going to tell you my funny story while I'm inking it. Um, on Friday, went up for my shower, um, as you do. Um, I looked down and my left foot was yellow. I'm not, you know, like yellow. And I was racking my brain whether I had done any, you know, whether I'd tea stained and could have possibly have got it on my foot, whether I'd used any ink near my foot. I certainly hadn't. Um, so I was a bit concerned. I called my other half up, he had a look, came downstairs and he had a little bit of a research. Well, by the time I came down from my shower, um, I then, you know, as you do, start to research yellow foot, yellow toe, well, it was my toes mainly, yellow toes. Anyway, it could have been anemia, which is quite, quite common for me because um, you know I've had it quite a few times in the past never had you know feet this yellow though must say could be jaundice it could be liver failure you know lots and lots of serious things so I immediately called the GP uh, made an appointment to see the doctor on the Saturday morning they were you know we, we need to get you in yellow toes we need to see you and um I had literally sat myself down in the shower and I had scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed trying to get this yellow off and it wasn't going anywhere. Well, I was talking to my mum and my mum said, send me, a, send me a picture. So as I had my foot up on the windowsill to take this photograph of my yellow toes, I, um, I noticed that one of my toenails was also yellow which I thought was a little bit strange because if it was one of these conditions surely your toenail wouldn't be yellow as well as your as your foot so I thought I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stick my foot I know you're gonna you're gonna um, tell me this was a bad idea but it it wasn't actually a bad idea it was a good idea I stuck my foot in a bowl of watered down bleach and guess what happened the yellow disappeared <laughs> So at this point, I'm thinking, right, okay, um, you know, I I need to cancel this GP appointment because I obviously don't have liver failure after all, because bleach wouldn't remove yellow skin if it was something serious. And the Saturday morning, me and my other half sat here, and um, I remembered what it was. <laughs> he had dropped, or he will tell you he didn't drop it, but he did. He dropped a jar 
out of the her of the spice cupboard of turmeric and it had gone all over my foot but we'd completely forgotten about that until the Saturday morning so I didn't have anemia or jaundice or liver failure I had turmeric foot um, but I can tell you something it took a lot of getting off <laughs> it really did this look a bit like camouflage now doesn't it I might have to do something with that um, yeah so that's what happened I had had all day Friday worrying that I had something really seriously wrong with me just to realize on Saturday morning that I had turmeric on my foot so yeah I'm just very very glad I hadn't actually made it to the doctors can you imagine <laughs> I don't think they'd have been very happy with me wasting their time for having a um, a spicy foot but you know that's a day in my life that's that's how my life is you know I don't actually like this green so maybe it will work though oh yeah maybe actually um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to I think I'm gonna pop a little bit of this on here and I'm gonna give this another spray if I can get rid of some of that green. It's probably going to look even more like camouflage now, isn't it? Although I have one prepared. I have one ready-made. That's quite... I quite like it. I quite like it. I think it's going to work with one of the images that I'm going to use. So... We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. Just give this a really quick dry. No, I'm not. I'm not going to dry that. Um, I'm going to pull out the one that I made earlier. Although I was going to make two. That might be dry by the time we finish this one. Okay. So what I did was I printed um, some images. This is my um, basic entomology kit. And I printed them onto a 90 GSM vellum. And tracing paper would work the same. As long as it's a heavyweight, you know, I'd recommend at least 90 GSM. But this is a is a heavyweight vellum, um, 90 GSM. I cannot tell you where it came from Amazon, but the, it was just a clear polythene packet. It didn't have any branding on it or anything like that. So I can't tell you. I'm just gonna check. I've got that caterpillar. I think that might look quite cute on there. But I'm gonna do, I want to do both of these. I want to do that one and have a, have a side one. I also wanted to do the bee. So, so you can see on this one I didn't use as much green. Which one should I do? Should we do a side one? No, because the book page that I'm going to use is this way. So we're going to use the B. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a little bit of edge around this but we don't have to cut it really close so I'm going to leave that like that I'm just trying to work out which side I've printed on this side this is the brighter side so I'm going to take my fabric tack turn this over I'm just going to make sure I'm in frame actually yeah and I'm going to just put a little bead of glue, not too close to the edge, because the glue will spread and I don't want it to come out, you know, I mean you might get a little bit out, but I don't want it to come all over the, the vellum, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue all the way around there. And then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to lay it down on top of my bee centering it as best I can then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to push away from the hole because that will push the glue into the index card rather than out of the hole out of the gap if that makes any sense at all so then we've got our little our little see-through vellum pocket I think that's quite cute so on this one 
Um, I was going to back it to another index card, but I wanted to use this um, this book page. It's very slightly smaller than the index card, but I was quite happy with that because I've used a small zigzag stitch to, to stitch that on. So we are going to use another book page. Now it just turns out, I think, that this is roughly half half this. No, it's not, it's a bit more than that. Right, what I, what I want is I want words to show through here, but I also want it the right way up that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my this is probably not going to work now I'm going to do this but I want to use my tear ruler because I don't want to have a neat edge all the way around so I'm just going to work out where I'm going to tear make sure that's try and keep the ruler still <laughs> so I want that one way up and that's going to be actually I want that side at the back and that side so that's going to go it's going to go it's upside down it's going to go like that and what you'll see is you can see the text through the vellum which looks lovely doesn't it so I'm going to ink this side because this is going to be you know completely visible at the back ink this everywhere I can't remember which one it is but there is a there is an entomology download on my website if you want to try this out I'll also link um, the kit so I'm going to do that. Now this side, I'm going to ink the edges because there is a chance that might you might see those. I'm not going to ink the centre because obviously that's a coloured image so you can actually, the text looks quite yellow behind that anyway. I'm trying to rush because this has to be one video. I'm not going to make this two. Definitely going to be one video. So, more inking. More inking. Now, so this will be sewn on the back there. Now, I I'm not exactly sure what your view will be like, but I have got my sewing machine so I can do the whole thing. I'm going to try and put it at an angle. Probably want to move that over a tad. Let's have a look. Let's try that. Okay, so obviously we don't want to sew the top together. So what I'm going to do... I'm just putting this onto zigzag stitch. Okay, I've probably got that a little bit small. I'm just going to stitch along the top of this to hold this together. I hope that's not too loud it's actually a lot better now I've got a proper bobbin in here and somebody um, messaged me to say I hadn't got my thread round here um, but you actually don't put it round there you only put it round here when you're refilling the bobbin so um, my, my machine is definitely threaded correctly <laughs> okay and now I'm just going to sew along the top of this one. I'm not sure what kind of view you've got, whether you can actually see this or not, but um, it's. I'd have to do it in 
um, I'd have to, I don't know how I would do this if I have different camera angles and try and spice it together. I'm not technical enough, unfortunately, to do all the, the posh editing, but you know, maybe one day I'll, I can learn another skill. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, let's just put that back there, is take the two parts and pop them together. And I'm going to sew... <laughs> That's a bit like me. Delayed reaction. That was my heat tool just starting up. Well, I only turned it on about 15 minutes ago, didn't I? Um, I'm going to sew it from the back because, like I said, it doesn't quite meet the sides, but I like that. And I'm going to try and keep them lined up while I tuck and moved. And tuck it under there the foot down and I'm gonna sew all of the way around to create our little pocket so I hope everyone is having a good week so far now it's only Tuesday but um, you know beautiful weather here in the UK. I kind of went a little bit off track there. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous. But um, the kids break up from school on Friday so um, I ha have a feeling in true British style it's probably going to start raining on about Friday. Friday onwards. Which will be a real, real shame because it has been super hot here for us. Now I'm a little bit concerned, I've missed, I have, I've missed that, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to lift my needle, move this across and I'm just going to stitch that again up this side. So I've now got two rows of stitches down there. That's fine, I like that. I can finally get rid of this. So what I am going to do is just ink the little torn edge that's sticking out the bottom because I don't want to cut it off, I like it. I like these little raw pieces sticking out. I think they add to the, to the overall thing. So that is our little window um, pocket so these are obviously going to be in a journal I'm making um, now this one I'll pop the pocket in the front of the envelope and this was one of those longer envelopes that I've um, made the size I want and you can actually can you see oh no you can't um, you kind of it's it is actually sewn to the envelope so this is sewn to the envelope, obviously it's not sewn at the top because I stitched across here before I stitched it on. Um, if you want to know how I kind of cut this down um, to make it smaller, because the long ones don't always fit in journals, they're designed for an A4 page. Um, so if you would like to know how I did that then I'm happy to show you. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, yeah. Um, this is one, if you don't have the die cut machine, I used a smaller index card and I used the, what is that, I think it's five, five centimetres, that'd be two inches. This is two inch punch and it is, um, again I've printed these on two vellum, they are the circles, so I've just done the same, cut that out. And you don't get a very good reach with this, so I've put it in the bottom kind of left hand corner. So you could then sew that onto an envelope or you could just back this in a similar way with some, um, some print and then you can see the text through it and turn that into a pocket in a very similar way that we've done with this one. Um, so that's just a, a kind of idea if you haven't got the... And what I wanted to do, this one would have worked well with that. But I'm going to end here because I do want to keep this one video. I think I'm going to do that because I like that. 
so that is our quick create for today i hope you um found that useful i'm just going to hold hold these up so you can actually see hopefully that you can see the text i'm sorry about the lighting today the bulb has gone in the main light so i'm not sure if you can see that or not um but yeah that's our little window fronted envelope and index cards so thank you for joining me. I will be back with a very quick create. It is a very, very quick create, um, probably in the next day or so. Thanks again for watching and for leaving all your lovely comments. I do love to hear from you and I will see you soon. Bye.